Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we decided uh, to lower the tone today. Well, certainly uh, lower the quality and uh, you're unfortunately stuck with Gregorio today. Um, the reason we're doing a video, I'm doing a video, is uh, basically to review another Honda. Uh, seems to be a lot going on in the month of March 2024 with Honda, with the launch of the new Blade and the CBR 600, but something a little bit different today. And nowhere near as sporty actually, but it is the 2024 Africa Twin. This is the uh, Adventure Sports, comes with a few changes. It's got a 19 inch front wheel, which I think is a first for an Africa Twin. So that'll be interesting to see what the handling's like compared to the normal 21 inch. It's had a few engine mods, so I think they've done some work on compression and valve timing. So it's got uh, more torque than before. Uh, not a great deal more. Uh, peak power's the same, but anyway, it's got a little bit more torque. The other difference with this bike over an Africa Twin that I've uh, ridden before is this is a DCT version. So I'm really intrigued to see what that's going to be like. I've ridden a DCT uh, before on the Honda Goldwing, but certainly not on an Africa Twin. And uh, one of the things that I'm intrigued to see what it's like with the, with the engine. The engine's got obviously a great deal of torque. So uh, in a manual, guys, it works very well. So be intrigued. Getting on board. And yeah, unusually, maybe. This is the DCT version, so obviously no clutch. You do get a brake there, so that is a, a brake, because obviously if you park on a hill, you can't leave it in first or second gear. There's no way to do that, so you need a little handbrake there so the bike doesn't roll off. And then just to pull away, for those that have never used one before, you stick it into drive there. You've got auto and manual, so if you want to use the toggles up and down rather than the auto box, you can. Obviously, it's still clutchless. Brake's exactly the same, so you get your foot brake and your handbrake. So I'm now in D, so you just turn the throttle and it starts rolling. Now, the only thing I have noticed, and I've only pulled away from standstill a couple of times, it's a, it's a bit strange pulling away from, from a stop uh, and it takes quite a few revs before it starts to move, which I'm not overly sure I like. It feels a bit like it's got a centrifugal clutch, like on the old scooters from like the late 70s, 80s, and it needs to sort of spin up before it starts to move. And I just find that a little bit hard. If you want to pull away quite slowly, and you say you're doing a little bit of soft roading on this, which is entirely possible, that might be a little bit awkward. So. I don't want to diss the gearbox um, overall, but that is something that I have noticed, so it's just a consideration. But now that I'm on the roll, um, 40 mile an hour, nice country lane. It's already in top gear, which is interesting, in sixth, if you can see on the dash there. So it's one of the things with autos, they can ride a little bit tall on the gearing. So uh, that's a bit strange. Now, because it's the big twin, this bike does have a massive amount of torque. And one of the things that I was, intrigued to see what it was like it was around the fact that you've got all this torque with the dct box because in the manual guys this engine i think is amazing it's it, I, it's one of my favorite honda engines actually i think it really is nice it's just got this wave of torque everywhere it's so easy to ride uh, this does feel quite different because of that box so what well, perhaps one of the things i'll do I'll get around this bend again we're in top gear already it's uh at, in sixth at 40 which is quite high. So if I now hit the button again, so you'll see now it's gone into sport and already it's now in fourth. So it's two gears lower at the same speed if you put it in sport. So a big, big difference. Just a little bit of a van coming up there. So uh, see if I can squeeze through. Yeah, now it changes down, makes a big difference if you put it in sport. But it's almost like the other extreme. Uh, so that's uh, also a little bit interesting. I'll leave it in uh, sport for a bit. Obviously, you have to get used to the fact that when you stop, you don't have to worry about the clutch. Yeah, and again, going back, I don't want to make the whole video about the gearbox, um, but given it's the DCT, I want to give a bit of feedback. In my view, and I've, and I've felt this before with, uh, with kind of autos, 
they're, they're, they change up too early if they're in normal mode and they, they hold the gears too long if they're in sport mode. I feel you need something in between. Now, of course, you could use manual, but then if you're going to do that, what's the point of getting in the first place? You could argue. But anyway, enough. There's nothing wrong with the gearbox. It's very nice. Um, you know, it certainly makes it very easy because you don't really have to do much. You can just enjoy the scenery and potter around. But enough. The bike itself is so comfortable. The seat is really, really nice. It's sort of fairly firm, not KTM firm, but it's nice and wide and it's it's comfortable and uh, I like that a lot. The engine is indeed, as you'd expect, very nice. I mean, that was fifth. It's not even changing down when they give it quite a lot of throttle there, but there's still so much torque and grunt on tap that it still pulls nicely and it does it does make a nice noise, this, uh, this bike. Really like the sound of it. It does feel quite heavy. Um, and probably made a little bit worse with the gearbox and this. I think they are quite a lot of weight, but it's certainly, this is definitely steering, feels a lot more agile. Wow, well, it feels more agile than the 21 inch front wheel. So yeah, it's, it's nice. So what I'll do now is we'll get out of these tree lines. And uh, in fact, I'll, I'm gonna slow down now and let's uh, bring it to a stop. There's nothing behind me. And so I'm in normal drive mode, uh, not sport. I'm just covering the rear brake with my foot and I'm just gonna crack the throttle and see what happens. Here we go. <laughs> the traction control cut straight in. So you can't just cane the throttle as if you're in a car. It just literally cut the power and stopped. So maybe I'll try it again. And I won't do it quite as aggressively. Just let the thing roll a little bit. So let me go left down here because I know it's uh, quite quiet up here. Right, so again, I shall stop here. And I'll, I won't be as silly with the throttle now. I'll just sort of roll it on, let the bike roll fairly aggressively. That's yeah, guys, really nice. <laughs> really easy, really quick. So yeah, there you go. If you, if you just feather the throttle a little bit and just let the thing roll, you can get away really quickly. So there's no, absolutely no worries at all about getting out of junctions if you need to. Because uh, that's one of the things that's playing on my mind with that sort of like slightly hesitant pull away before it starts to move. Let me try the whole thing again in sport. And um, yeah, I'll see you from my hospital bed, no doubt. Right, here we go. So roll it on again. Yeah, it, do it actually doesn't, if you ride it that hard, from a standstill. The sport versus normal mode doesn't make any difference. It holds the gears pretty much the same. I guess the bike's sensing that I'm giving it a load of stick. Uh, right, anyway, I'll put it back into drive just to keep the engine a little bit calmer. And I want to try and keep the speeds down so that there's not too much wind noise. And you can hear my calming, relaxing, and thoroughly enjoyable voice. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it's not. So uh, don't hold any of this against lamb chops. If the videos are not to your liking, don't unsubscribe, don't ever watch one again. This is a rare thing, me doing a video on my own. But now what I like about this bike is um, it's, it's so comfortable. The foot pegs, nice sort of, you know, my knees are bent, but not too bent. I just feel very, very natural. The bars are, are wide on it, which you kind of expect. And it's nice and i think on paper you know it does appear down on power to some of the other big adventure bikes from ktm and bmw the new 1300 gs but uh, i honestly think that it is literally just on paper in the real world this feels very nice and all you'd ever need you know it's not the sort of bike that you're going to go too mad on i don't think i can already tell you now personally i wouldn't bother with the with the dct uh, and, and I do like a DCT, but I think on this bike where you probably want a bit more control, um, you know, particularly if you're on a bit of loose stuff and gravel, I, I just feel like it, I'm one step removed from what I want to be doing because of the DCT and it's making decisions for me. So personally, I wouldn't bother. There's nothing wrong with it and it does work very well. It's very smooth. The gear changes, you know, you can hardly feel the changes, particularly once you get to sort of third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So, so smooth. Yeah, so here's the bike. Um, obviously a good looking bike. And just the differences for this year on this particular version is 
the 19 inch front wheel. So obviously it's going to turn a little bit quicker than with the 21. I know there's been some controversy over that. Um, obviously you can still get a version with the uh, 21 inch front wheel. So those of you that are doing a little bit of off-roading or soft-roading can still do that. This particular version also, uh, as mentioned, comes with the DCT. So it's essentially an automatic and uh, you'll see here that you can put it into kind of drive or sport or indeed a manual mode. And if you go manual, then you can use toggles on the left uh, handlebar stalk to change up and down manually, if you will. So on the road, this bike is 17,599. Uh, obviously it costs more if you want the DTC gearbox. Uh, if you go for a traditional manual box, then the price drops down to 16,299. It's a 1084 cc parallel twin um, and this year uh, as mentioned it's got higher compression revised valve timing so whilst peak power is the same at 100 horsepower uh, the torque now peak torques 100 newton meters i beg your pardon 112 newton meters from 105 so it's about a seven percent increase in torque um, the wet weight of this bike is 253 kilograms so it's no featherweight but obviously it's got quite a lot going on. Pretty good looking bike, like the paint job on this, really nice. Kind of, kind of strange, coppery, gold colored forks, different shade than the front wheel. I like the color of the forks actually, um, but a little surprising, it doesn't match the wheels. Not that that's an issue. Nice cases on the engine. Yes, yeah, so it's a pretty good looking bike. Um, as before, comes with a, with a dual screens for those of you who are familiar with it. So anyway, we'll uh, get back to riding and I'll give you my my thoughts and uh, observations. So what else to say then? So I suppose at this price point, you can start comparing it to some of the other big adventure bikes. Uh, I think one of the things that's perhaps a disadvantage on this over the, the GS is the fact that this is chain drive. So um, obviously it weighs less than shaft drive, but they're quite heavy bikes anyway. So I honestly don't think you're gonna notice it in reality. Of course, you've got a service shaft drive, so there's a cost there, but I do like that because these are the sort of bikes that I, you know, get used probably more all year round than in sort of like mucky conditions and chain maintenance is a pain. You know, dash is nice, a bit too much dialage for my liking. I don't even know what half of these things mean. You've got P, E, B, 1, T. It's a bit like, oh my God, look at this. Woohoo! Anyway. We'll chop that out because it's uh, not that exciting. And you do get the two, uh, the two displays and they are synchronized, which is all rather nice because it's a bit tragic when they're reading different speeds. So yeah, it's a bit strange doing a video on my own. Uh, I'm used to kind of chatting and thinking about different things, but riding around, kind of talking to myself, it was a bit weird really. I can't believe anyone would want to listen to this tribe. Of course, the other problem, not that you're allowed to do them on roads anyway, is there is no wheeling here because uh, clutch ups just ain't gonna be happening. But now on a serious note, this, this is the sort of bike that if you ride it, you know, just at the sort of 40 to 65%, so you're not in a massive rush, just take it nice and relaxed. It's so, so nice, so civilized. I'm really, really liking the direction changes because of the uh, smaller front wheel. It definitely suits it on road. So that's quite nice. And I think it is good to have that as an option. I'm surprised that it's taken Honda so long to, you know, release one with a 19 inch front wheel. So that is good. Uh, it won't suit everybody, of course, but it is nice. Uh, suspension is all very comfortable. You know, it's sort of, nothing jars you, it wafts over the bumps, but you still feel plenty from the road. In terms of the brakes, they're really, really strong. Really like those. I actually got pretty good feel as well. I like the brakes. And so, yeah, they're, they're, they're very good. Or dislikes, uh, I think they're a bit subjective to dislikes. I don't like the fact that the they've got daytime running indicators. I really don't like that, I don't get it. Uh, just looks a bit weird like you're in America. No offense to anyone that lives in America, but I don't particularly like that. Woo! See, ah, uh, that's, see <laughs> Right, that is one thing that I really, really don't like. So that all went a bit squiffy because there was virtually no engine braking 
because as you're going towards that bend it just stays in I think it was staying in fifth then so it's almost like you've got a false neutral and of course normally you'd be going down the box using the engine it's right there you don't get that on this and you know not being funny but I'm not going to be toggling between auto and manual just for various bends so I mean I'm going to stick it in manual now so I think I'm in right yeah I'm definitely in manual now so I'm using my thumb and my forefinger to change gear so now with this bend here I can oh, I didn't even change down there you go change down a third and then slow down yeah that was weird I didn't like that at all so it reminded me of uh, Guy Martin at the TT and I think it was 2017 when he was riding for the factory Honda team and that was the year that McGuinness also had a crash at the northwest and I think they had crashes because they both got false neutrals um, and that's exactly what that felt like that was horrible actually but yeah so but my view is if you're going to use the manual toggle then what's the point of having the DCT other than you haven't got to use the clutch I suppose but I'll just stop here let me just show you what I mean about pulling away because it is a bit strange so I'm now stopped but there I'm revving the bike now nothing happens no movement at all there and then and then it goes it just it's just a bit strange sounds like I'm criticizing it's just something to get used to that's all listen to that and how well that's coming out not bad for stocker yeah what isn't so nice is I'm going up a hill now which won't be picked up on the camera and just until then it was still in fifth now it's in fourth it just runs too tall a gear it really does and that is oh now it's second too low third would have been lovely you get the point it's either too too low a gear or too tall or you put it in manual yeah it needs kind of like um a goldilocks mode <laughs> which is you know just about right and weirdly in some cars now where they've got the dual clutch transmission I think they have really mastered the cars being in the right gear at the right speed for the right conditions really quite clever but I don't think they've cracked it here to be honest with you it's uh, it's either too sporty and then it just feels a bit vibey and it's like it's holding a gear unnecessarily or it's you're in sixth gear doing sort of 35 mile an hour and you just feel like you've got no control and it's sort of it's not labouring but it's just like you know you open the throttle and it's thinking about it so I feel really bad for saying it because I'm sure Honda has spent a lot of time and effort developing in it and there's probably quite a few people out there that own one thinking Gregorio you are so annoying criticising my bike I don't mean to I'm just trying to give you my honest assessment today I'm taking this on a 350 mile round trip to Exeter uh, uh, uh. Uh. well I spent six hours on this bike today Oh bloody hell, it's like not even run in. It's not even, don't need a new bike yet, it's not even run in. You meet the nicest people on a Honda. It's not hurting, but I could feel it, if you know what I mean. Bye bye bye, good bye, good time. You know, I expect people have been shouting at the screen saying, oh you can adjust that, you great big fat knobhead. Is that maximum power or is that least power though? It's the site you probably see quite a lot. Africa Twins at the side of the road with the owners with the manuals out. <laughs>